This video response is going to go out to Kevin Gates, and that is because you uploaded, and I use the term loosely, a music video entitled Breakfast. I actually did watch the whole video, and I also read through all the lyrics, and I had a lot of questions about your lyrics, okay? Uh, but before I begin, I want to tell everybody that I have published five Kindle books if you want to read any of them, let me know, and I will put a link down here in the comments to help you find those books. All right? But let's just go on with this. Uh, I will start this review by examining this video. The, the mountain sh snow shots that he got were beautiful. I mean, it, the, the uh, wildlife out there is absolutely spectacular. It, it, the video was well shot. I have to give you that. That was beautiful and fantastic. And as I can see, Kevin Gates appears to be very kind to his wife. And his house looks very nice. I have to give him that. I guess the first question I would have for him about his music video is how much snow did that area of the world receive before he recorded this video? How cold was it when he recorded this video? Because he was out there, he didn't have a hood on or anything. Um, as a matter of fact, he had some feathers that I would say were probably from Native Americans, I don't know. Uh, he'd have to specify that. Uh, I'd like to know if he's somehow related to Native Americans. That would be interesting to find out. What food dish was he serving to his wife in the video? So if the video is so great, then what's the problem with this song? Well, the problem begins with auto-tune. First and foremost, if a song possesses auto-tune, it's an automatic F. The end. End of story. I'm sorry. From what I've been told, this guy has a fantastic voice. There is absolutely no reason why he should have used auto-tune. He could have just sung this stuff, stuff himself and he would have been fine. Or if he felt that certain parts of the song needed a little bit of voice coaching, he could have found a voice coach to help him out a little bit. I don't think he would have needed a lot of help, but he could have had a voice coach work with him a little bit, and he could have made a much better song. He did not need auto-tune. Period. But I'll tell you another thing that's a no-sale. The overuse of a drum machine. Okay? Hire a real drummer. You don't have to have a drum machine. I mean, they may be more expensive, but by golly, they're worth it. I assure you. And, and let me tell you something. Before I go on here, and like I said, uh, Kevin Gates, from what I've been told, is a very talented singer, and I'm glad for it. But even when you have somebody like Rod Stewart or Stevie Nicks, uh, their voices aren't all the greatest, but I assure you, they make lots of hits. You just have to make a few slight adjustments, that's all. Okay? So, when you want to flunk a song, you say no to auto-tune. You say no to overuse of drum machines. Neither one are necessary. And don't overuse a synthesizer either. That's another fail. <coughs> Why does this guy learn how to play an authentic piano? I, I'm sure it wouldn't take you very long to learn, and he would really benefit from it. Okay? Or he could have played the guitar or any other instrument. That would have been great. Or he could have hired some people to play some real live instruments. There's no reason why he couldn't. The overuse of a th synthesizer, and this is something I've criticized in a lot of disco songs, they did the same thing, and it's wrong. It, it's a sign of a bad song right there but let's go into the lyrics shall we who is this DJ chose and why do I care that he's in the music video okay now Kevin Gates begins this song with some suggestive lyrics and I have no problem with that at all that's fine Rick James did the same thing in the song Super Freak so again I have no problem with that but the suggestive lyrics quickly come to an end and that's a big no-no in my book. I encourage Kevin Gates to be more creative and keep his lyrics suggestive instead of trying to just blurt it all out. There's no need of that. Young minds do not need to be exposed to the material like this, and I don't think it's very healthy. Besides, I'm smart and I can figure things out all by myself, and I'm sure if I can, some young kid can figure this out too. Not that I'd want him to, but he could probably figure this out. When you make a reference to a Fender, are you referring to a Fender guitar? And 
and you build ships and place them into bottles. Now that would have been, you know what? You could have made a whole song about how you put ships in a bottle. That'd be fantastic. That'd be a great song. So I, why did you create? Why did you create a song about building a ship and putting it in a bottle? And what are you the general of? Ever served in the military at all? That'd be a good question. And if you're going to make a reference to a ship in a bottle, then when, if you're the, if you're the, if you're on in charge of the ship, wouldn't you be an admiral instead of a instead of a uh, general? I will have to admit that there are a lot of people that do not live your lifestyle, okay? And it's sad that they don't, and they should. I'll give you that. Then you make a reference to a plant that is grown in Peru. Are you consuming this plant to reduce sun damage on your skin? Are you trying to lower your blood pressure? Love to know that. Then you mention another plant that is indigenous to India. Are you boosting your energy or trying to release stress? That'd be nice to know. What border are you referring to? What business are you conducting? I could go on and on with these lyrics because it's, it's just too long. Way, way too long. Too much detail. We don't need it. Uh, he could have split these lyrics up into three or four different songs and they would all have been sounding great. Except he needed to be a little more suggestive and a lot less blunt about everything. So, think about how many hit songs he could have made out of those lyrics. You want to talk about volume, there's volume. So what's the largest problem with this, quote, song? It has the same problem that many rap songs had back in the late 1980s. What is basically a rap song? Well, it's a bunch of poetry set to background music. Well, if I want poetry set to background music, I can go to Audible and buy a, a book of poetry that's set to background music. The end of the story. I don't need this incorporated in a song. Now the thing is that what became the bigger problem is, even if they wanted to do that, and that's fine, but the music scene of the late 1980s became saturated with rap songs. Okay, And they made the exact same mistake as what the disco movement made in the late 1970s. They just saturated Everything had to be disco. Everything had to be disco. And after a while it's like, are you kidding me? I like a disco song just as much as anybody else, but I'll tell you what, I don't want to be saturated with it. And the same thing with rap. I didn't want to be saturated. And hip-hop was the same way. So, every one of these songs that just saturated the music industry back in the late 1980s, and this one in particular, uh, the one we're talking about now, uh, they lack key elements that challenge music consumers. You should challenge them mentally on this stuff. And you're not. Okay? Let me show you some examples of what I'm referring to. I want you to take a moment and focus on the saxophone player and the flute player that performed in the song Lot of Love by Nicolette Larson. Not the, not the version that Nick Jodine did. Nick Jodine doesn't know anything. But the original Nicolette Larson lot of love back in the late 1970s that was a saxophone player and a flute player. They almost spoke for themselves. Then focus on the piano playing of Eric Carmen's All By Myself. That middle section when he, get, he gets almost to the bottom. Boom. Okay. Then focus on the last chord played in the song Give a Little Bit by Supertramp. What about the saxophone and violin playing that you can hear both in MacArthur Park and Heaven Knows by Donna Summer, which I'm going to cover here in just a minute. And let's not forget the sudden shift of music in the song Don't Want to Go On to You Like That by Elton John. And do I really have to mention the great trumpet playing, the great trumpet playing of Earth, Wind, and Fire or the great vocals of the Manhattans? What made these artists and songs so distinctive? Well... Do I have to point out the saxophone and harmonica playing in the song Take the Long Way Home by Supertramp or the harmonica playing in the song Piano Man by Billy Joel? And let's not forget the flute playing at the end of the song So Far Away by Carole King. 
Do I have to remind everyone of the fantastic shift in music in the song, the original song, Layla, by Eric Clapton? Do you find any of this in old or modern rap songs? If you do, I'd like to know, but so far that's not what I found. I definitely didn't find it in this song. Because the rap music was permeating the radio scene back in the late 1980s, by 1989, I turned off my radio. I couldn't stand it anymore. It just it was impossible for me to stand it. It reached a point that every song that people heard was rap or hip-hop. I was like, I'm done with this. Now, rap can be incorporated into what we call a musical reservoir, but it can't overwhelm a musical rep rep reservoir. And that's the same thing that happened to disco. When you overwhelm it, they're going to reject it. So, the question is, why do so many people today listen to rap? Well, I may have some answers to that question. You have to first look at the beginning of rap. It all started with a song by the Sugar Hill Gang. I presume Deborah Harry listened to that song and decided to incorporate rap into her song called Rapture. Now the thing is that she incorporated Rapture, incorporated uh, rap into Rapture. It didn't dominate the whole song, and it made it good. Like I said, if I really want to listen to all, if I want to listen to poetry that's set to background music, I can go to Audible and get something like that. I really don't want it here. But that's only part of the explanation. So why do people today still listen to basically nothing but rap? Well, uh, I may know part of that answer. Some of this could be attributed to social media sites like Spotify and YouTube. Have you ever noticed the recommendations that Spotify and YouTube make to uh, teenagers today? There you go. Now, social media sites are not blameless on this either. Have you ever watched the recommendations that YouTube uh, sh shoots out to to uh, uh, people that are subscribed to YouTube? Just, just take a look at the recommendations. They know the ages. They, even if they're signing into their parents' account, they're going to see that these parents are watching some of these songs, so they'll make more recommendations like this. And they know this. They track this. Now think about this for a second. It, it's a lot less expensive to formulate synthesizer-generated music with auto-tune than it is to hire a real band and play genuine rock or pop songs. When was the last time you saw a musical group singing together? Do groups of rap stars come together and harmonize their rap songs? That's rare to see. At this point, someone may ask if there are any rap songs that incorporate a cappella or real-life musical instruments or melodies or harmony twists. Well, it's possible there, there is, but it's hard to find. But do you see these elements in the most popular rap songs? Do your research and see what you find. Alright, if you're not Kevin Gates and you're watching this video right now, I want you to go over to Kevin Gates' YouTube channel. Watch his videos if you want to, rate his videos, comment on his videos, subscribe to his channel if you'd like, and more importantly, tell him that the speed learner sent you. I will tell you more in a future video, so I'd like for you to stay tuned.